the Democratic primary for governor might not be as contentious as we once thought. I am asking you to help me become your 51st governor so that we can have leadership that listens to all sides and that respects the diversity of our great state. That was just two months ago. Since then, Superintendent Glenda Ritz's campaign has been marked by a lack of fundraising and organization. She's now dropping out of the race and instead running for re-election as the state superintendent. In a statement, she said now is not the time for her to run for governor. The best use of my time and talents, she says, will be to serve our children, their families, and the taxpayers of Indiana as superintendent of public instruction. I must continue to be 110% engaged in supporting public education. So what does Ritz's decision mean for the other candidates still in the race? And what does it mean for the future of public education in Indiana? Our team has been following this issue closely. So we go to our education reporter, Rachel Morello, here in our studios, and reporter Brandon Smith at the State House. Brandon, let's start with you. Does this help the Democrats seeing as how they have a clear front runner now in John Gregg? Possibly, though, I think the best answer is that her dropping out doesn't make much of a difference on that. After we saw those early fundraising numbers, it already looked like John Gregg was the clear frontrunner. Ritz raised a somewhat paltry amount and then had a scandal over the timing of some of those contributions. So it didn't look like she was having much of an impact on the race, and her departure pro from it probably won't change that. Brandon, do we know if Democratic Party leaders were meeting with Glenda Ritz and then even possibly requesting she get out of the race? It doesn't appear so, at least not this early in the campaign cycle. If Ritz had kind of hung in there through later this year, those conversations might have taken place, but at least this early on, it looks like this decision just came from her. Rachel, let's turn to you. Even in the beginning parts of her gubernatorial campaign, Ritz was relying heavily on her experience and education, fo focusing on issues like college preparedness. Will she actually be able to get her message out more effectively in a re-election campaign for superintendent? Well, she's certainly better positioned to deliver that message as an incumbent. Uh, her gubernatorial campaign events were not particularly well attended. She was seeing smaller crowds there than she was at any event she hosted as superintendent. Um, and she has a broad base of support from teachers who are obviously a more appropriate audience for the message she's pushing with education. Well, and we actually spoke to a political an an analyst on the same issue, but we asked him what it would mean for John Gregg's campaign message. Here's what he said. Now that Ritz has decided she's going to run for superintendent, she and Greg can really begin to work together and talk about education across two campaigns, talk about how it relates to economic development, how it relates to public safety, how it relates to everything about state government. They can reinforce the messages that the other is delivering, and really you get a benefit there. You have a team running as opposed to a series of individuals running. Let's go to Brandon. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. In some ways, I think having Ritz run for state superintendent again frees up John Gregg to really focus in on the, the messages and the, and the topics he's more in tune with while letting Ritz hammer away at Mike Pence on education. Well, and speaking of hammering Mike Pence, Ritz was running a very anti-Pence campaign. Some of our viewers might be familiar with the back and forth Governor Pence and Ritz have had since they took office. Most of us by now have seen the signs that say, fire Mike Pence and Pence must go. Brandon, now that Ritz is out of the race, will those sentiments go away? Oh, no, not at all. As we heard from Andy Downs, this really allows Ritz and Greg to work together now, and a primary focus will be on how poor a job they think Mike Pence has done. Really, this campaign was always going to be as much anti-Pence as it was pro whoever the Democratic nominee is going to be. Rachel, similar question. Do you expect Ritz to tone down her rhetoric against the governor in her superintendent campaign? I don't. Um, as an incumbent now, Ritz will have to defend her record as superintendent because challengers can say, well, you said you were going to do X and you weren't able to accomplish that. Why not? And in Ritz's case, she can point to the governor as her defense. The power struggles between Ritz and Pence have been some of the biggest headlines uh, during her tenure so far. Um, so, for example, the creation of Pence's Center for Education and Career Innovation, or the controversy over the length of the statewide I-STEP test this past spring. Um, this makes it easy for her to blame policy failures on the fact that, from her perspective, the governor isn't letting her get any work done. And this can actually help her party, especially John Gregg, because it pushes their message that it's time for a change. 
And we should remember the general election is still 15 months away, so there is plenty of time for all this to change. Thank you, Brandon, and thank you, Rachel. Thanks. Thanks, Joe.